Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is my mailbox. You notice that it's empty? It's been an empty for 11 weeks. So, the hell with this, I'm going shopping. Wow, that was fast. Through the magic of video editing, I'm back from the brick and mortar store where there are hundreds of fountain pens with no waiting. And what did I return with from a store that has Mont Blancs worth literally thousands of dollars? Well, this $12, $10 in the US. GLC 942-4075. After 6 p.m., 942-4047. Pilot Plunix. I apologize for the package here, but uh, it got damaged when I ripped it open a few minutes from now. Sorry. Where the Platinum Preppy is loved for its smooth nib, which is interchangeable with other Platinum pens, and for the fact that it can be eyedropper converted, and will hold a ton of ink, the Plumix gets its share of devoted followers because of what is not so well hidden in the name. It's an old style plume. I salute shall sweep away the stars from the blue threshold. My white plume. The Plumix is probably the most inexpensive cursive italic fountain pen there is. Let me know in comments if there's something else like this elsewhere. I bought the Plumix because of one of its cooler features, the easily swappable nib. In fact, it is for the nib alone that I bought this pen, so I could pull out the nib and put it into my Pilot Explorer. But the moment I opened the package, a few minutes from now, as you will see, uh, I noticed a number of really cool things about this fountain pen with the odd squid-like cap and long tail that made me want to not toss it away right away. Want to know what those things are? Well, stay tuned because we will explore those things right now. So here is the Plumix still in its store packaging. This was a real win for the brick and mortar shop over online. Staples claims fast free shipping and in-store pickup, which they've converted recently into in-parking lot pickup, which is very convenient. So for some items like my ink cyclopedia here, I'll purchase with Staples and get it in a day or two at my door. But on the same order as this Rolodex, I ordered a blue Plumix which online staples said would arrive at the same time as the Rolodex, a couple of days. Well, the Rolodex arrived the very next day, which was awesome, but the Plumix has yet to arrive or even ship. I did the online chat thing with staples and canceled the order two weeks ago, but I'm told I'll have to wait another week before my credit card is credited $16.98. It's amazing how they can instantly take the money from your credit card, but it takes them a month or more to get that money, that refund back to your credit card. I wonder where all that interest goes. Hmm. Interesting. Fascinating. In the meantime, after a few days of the Staples no-show, I called my favorite pen shop, Reed's, in downtown Calgary, and asked them about the Plumix. They said they had two of these, and they were $4 cheaper than staples. So they set this one aside for me. Of course, as always, I saw something else that intrigued me and my pen fanaticism and also lightened my wallet. I saw this. This is a platinum, wait for it, wait for it, a platinum, wait for it, I'm waiting, a platinum balance. I had not heard of the Platinum Balance, so I bought it with a view to comparing it to the marvelous incremental line of affordable fountain pens from Platinum. And of course, that line begins with the, the Platinum Preppy, the ever-present Preppy, very popular, and then moves up to the Prefonte, and then I recently reviewed this. This is the Platinum Plaisir. This is a very interesting pen. And of course, all three of these share the same nib and feed assembly. But this balance is a further upscale. It's even more upscale than the Plaisir. 
and this is not permanent here, by the way. And it has a very interesting, I don't think that's gold plated, but gold colored platinum nib and a different section and a nice feel. It's a metal, like a light aluminum, very much like the, the Plaisir. But today's video is not about the Platinum, it's about Pilot. I want to unpackage this Plumix and take a look at the pen, but I know before I open it that I'm not really interested in this pen. I'm interested in the medium italic nib that comes on it and how well it will work in my Pilot Explorer which I did a review on recently, and you can see I bought a, a Con 70 converter, uh, which is a really nice converter and holds a ton of ink uh, for my Explorer. And I want to see whether I can swap that nib out for the medium metallic and how that writing experience is going to be. Let's dig into the package, and then I'll do a full review of it. So here we go. Let's open this package. Maybe we should look at it first. Refillable, rechargeable, Plumix, medium metallic, point moyenne italique. God, I butchered that. And it says advanced ink feed system for smooth writing, long lasting ink supply, medium metallic nib, includes two ink cartridges, and of course, the price in Canadian dollars, $12.98. So let's rip in. Well, it's very, very light, and it has a, an interesting shape. And that section is triangular, which I do not like. But that little bulge is very nice, and that sort of rat tail. Some people call this a squid pen, because it looks like a squid. It unscrews, and it posts. What do you know? It posts. And there is our Pilot Medium Italic Nib. It'll be interesting to see how that writes. It's a little bit heavier with the ink cartridge in there. But I could guess... Oh, no, those threads are pretty wide. You would have to use a lot of silicone grease. There's no ring or anything to eyedropper this. So I wouldn't even tempt that. Anyway, we will take a look at this Pilot in more detail. The Pilot Plumix. When I come back and do a full review. Now, as I mentioned in my introduction, I thought I'd just toss this piece of plastic in the garbage once I had extracted the nib and put it in my Explorer. In fact, I was going to just do a video on how to pull the nib from the Plumix and make your Metropolitan or your Explorer into a cursive italic. Instead, I became intrigued by some of the design ingenuity of this pen. For a cheap plastic pen, it has a lot going for it, and a lot of thought behind it. But I shouldn't be surprised in the least. This is a pilot, and those folks in Japan have designed bona fides up the yin-yang. I decided to do a full review here of the Plumix and add the nib swap with the Explorer and the Metropolitan as part of the review. So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and do a writing sample. And stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The Plumix comes in a few colors. This one is in a translucent gray or black. It also comes with two standard Pilot cartridges, which hold a generous amount of ink, one full milliliter compared to only 0.75 milliliters in a standard international cartridge. Pilot cartridges are also very rugged, and I've been using a syringe to fill one in my Pilot E95S, and I've used this for about, oh geez, six months without having to change that cartridge out for another one. You can also get these mixable cartridges, uh, which are designed to be used for the Pilot Parallel Pen by touching two nibs together and then getting a line that graduates from one color to another. But they are standard pilot size cartridges and there's no reason not to use the wider range of colors available 
Overall, this is a really odd looking and shaped pen. The cone shaped cap with the fins is what gives this pen its nickname, the squid pen. In actuality, these fins are roll stops and they work really well. The cap is very short and only covers just the nib and not the section which is transparent. The section is long and similar in design to the Lamy Safari's triangular grip. As you can see, it has some similarities with that design. Curved on the bottom and a couple of divots on the top. The barrel is also uniquely and thoughtfully shaped. This is no simple tube shaped barrel. It is barrel shaped on the top until it tapers away towards the tail but underneath it bulges out before it drops away to that long tail and has a number of elliptical shaped grooves in it. The whole thing comes to a, a point at the end where you can see that injection molding gate. But before we even take off the cap, let's look at how this shape fits in the hand. It's very reminiscent of the Pen BBS 323 with that curvy shape, which I've said in the past is the most ergonomically comfortable pen I've ever held. Look at how that bulge of the barrel sits in the web of your thumb and the tail tapers off to complete the 21st century version of a calligrapher's plume or quill. This is very well thought out and very well designed. Now let's uncap this pen and you'll notice another well thought out feature. It unscrews with about one and a half turns to reveal what Pilot calls a medium italic nib. But watch again as I cap and uncap this pen. The pen has only one starting point for the threads, which allows the nib to be aligned with the barrel logo every time you cap it, depending on... There we go, align with the nib from any angle align with the nib. Now this is a $12 pen, well $10 American. Why can't other manufacturers of demonstrators find a way to do this? Another thing, the cap posts. What a surprise. And it doesn't off balance the pen either because that cap is so light you don't even feel it. But you don't lose track of your little squid head. Also, let's look at the thickness of that plastic at the cap head and it matches the thickness of the plastic that's surrounding that feed. Pilot does not consider this a disposable pen with this kind of engineering built into it. And just when you think the posted cap with its uh, squid fins will be the roll stop for you, look at this. That little bulge is pretty much of a roll stop in its own right. Of course, it stops a little bit faster with the squid fins attached. But again, well thought out features. And let's look at the nib next to the Pilot Metropolitan. There's a medium nib from Pilot Metropolitan, which has Pilot Japan and an M in brackets. And a 417, I think that says. And this one has a 414 on it. And let's look at the Explorer next to that. So here we have the Plumix on the left, the Pilot Metro in the center, and the Pilot Explorer on the right. All three of them medium, and the Explorer doesn't have any marking on the bottom right of it at all. But these three nibs are interchangeable with each other, as we shall see. The nib and feed simply pull out and can be swapped with either the Explorer or the Metropolitan. This means you can basically get a cursive italic nib replacement for your Explorer or your Metro for only about 10 bucks US. The barrel unscrews and you can see there's a CON40 converter in there. It doesn't come with the CON40 but I have a CON40 and so I put it in. The CON70 does not fit. So before we get into some size comparisons, let's do a nib swap here with my Pilot Explorer. We just pull the nib and feed out of both pens with just a bit of a pull, just like that. And here's the Explorer nib. Pull it out, and now we can put the Plumix nib in the Explorer. 
and I'm going to put my CON70 converter in the Explorer. And now I have a Plumix nib in my Explorer. When you're putting a nib back in the uh, Plumix, you just have to make sure about orientation that the top of the pen there lines up with the top of the nib and just push it in. And now my Plumix has a boring old medium nib on it. Now I have a, an Explorer with a cursive italic and a huge ink supply, relatively, with the CON70 converter. And I have a substantial upgrade to this pen, which was the whole purpose of buying the Plumix. Of course, you can do that with the Metro as well. Just uh, put the Plumix in there. It comes out exactly the same way. And of course, orientation doesn't matter on this pen. You just push it in any old way. But uh, I don't write with my Metropolitan at all. I keep it for size comparisons purposes only. And of course, this leaves me with a Plumix with a regular nib. Uh, for which I have no purpose whatsoever. So that leaves me only run recourse by another Plumix. Now let's look at some size comparisons. So here is the Pilot Plumix with the Pilot Explorer, Pilot Metropolitan, a Lamy Safari, and the Pen BBS 323. Now let's look at the posted. So the only one of this group that does not post is the Pen BBS 323, and it was never designed to post. Uh, the rest of them post very securely. And surprisingly, the Plumix isn't the longest of the group. That uh, belongs to the Safari and the Explorer. Now let's see some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pilot Plumix. And it is a medium. metallic nib. Steel, of course. And the ink today is Robert Oster. Fire and ice. Let's check the wetness on this pen. You can see it's a decently wet pen. As to line variation, well, there's no point in pushing this, but uh, here is a straight line. Of course, the triangular grip forces you to be on this angle, which is the idea behind the italic. Uh, you have to turn your wrist to get a straight up and down line. And there is a horizontal line. If you hold it the way the pen wants you to hold it, there is a vertical line and there is a horizontal line. So you're getting more on the upstroke, on the angle, you're getting more thin lines than you do on the downstroke on the opposite angle. So you're getting natural line variation because it is an italic nib. And our writing sample And reverse writing, I don't know why you'd want to do this. It's almost difficult to hold the pen upside down. In fact, almost impossible to hold it upside down. But it does write, and almost the same, so there's no point. And some quick writing. So 
See, the pen is perfectly capable of keeping up with some quick writing. And I forgot to show the swatches. Here is the swatch for Robert Oster, Fire and Ice. And compared with my fingers, and compared with Kyanite du Nepal from J. Urban, and Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, since I only bought the pen to pull the nib and never use the actual pen itself, the fact that I'm considering buying another one says a lot. There's a lot to like about this fountain pen. It truly is the quill of the 21st century. It's also a terrific and inexpensive way to try out a stub nib and see how it affects your cursive writing. I tried my hand at some flex writing, and all I can say is that I suck. But this whole place sucks. But a stub nib gives you that instant line variation, an instant line character without changing your writing pressure. Then there is this unique pen shape. It fits in the hand beautifully. It posts, it has a built-in roll stop, it can take a Con 40 converter, whether you like them or not, it's a converter. And it can even take these mixable color cartridges from Pilot. And even more than all of that, it's only 10 bucks. So what's not to like? Well, it's very, very light. As stubs go, it is a little scratchy and a little drier than I'd like, but I'm sure I can smooth that out and make the nib wetter. I don't know what else to criticize. I don't like the box. Uh, don't like the packaging. This was a terrific discovery for me, and I'm very pleased that I can swap this nib to my Explorer. And now that I have this incredible Leonardo Memento Zero with an Architect Italic nib, I'm starting to prefer the line character I get instantly without pressure in these italic nibs and this newly upgraded explorer with the large ink supply courtesy of the con 70 converter and the new cursive italic nib courtesy of the pilot plumix i now have more ways to satisfy my line character appetite plus the plumix is 260 dollars canadian less than the memento zero and there you have it if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.